In the first seven starts of his life, only one horse managed to better fame and glory, and that was none other than See the Stars. Unbeaten at two, he stepped straight up from Maiden Company to Group 1 level, where he belied his inexperience. Fame and glory from Drumbeat, fame and glory and Drumbeat, a one-two for Aidan O'Brien. As a three-year-old, he followed the route taken to Epsom by Galileo and High Chaparral, maintaining his unbeaten record in the Ballysack Stakes and the Derrinstown Stud Derby Trial, penalised in both for his Group 1 win as a two-year-old and conceding weight all round. Come Derby Day, fame and glory was sent off the solid favourite, despite facing the impressive Guineas winner, See the Stars. The betting is really interesting, John, they're steaming into Fame and Glory. Well, the favourite for this year's Investec Derby, Fame and Glory, now at 9-4. to four. It's 11-4, see the stars, 30-2, Rip Van Winkle, 7-1, Black Bear Island, 17-2, Gone Arrows, and 16-1, Bardos. Not helped by the steady early pace, he met with his first defeat. See the stars, trained by John Ox, ridden by Mick Canan, his third derby winner. He beats fame and glory. It's a blanket finish for third. Unfortunately, the eagerly anticipated rematch with See the Stars at the Curra failed to materialise when the latter defected at the 11th hour due to overnight rain. As they race towards the final furlong and fame and glory, the favourite takes it up. Goes on from Golden Sword, Moran in third, master of the horse in four and racing inside the final furlong. It's going to be a seventh Irish derby success for Aidan O'Brien, a third win in the race for Johnny Martin as they race up to the line. Fame and glory wins the Dubai duty for the Irish derby. Well, the writing was on the wall from a long ways out. Rockhampton had gone a good gallop in front, Golden Sword to his credit ran a good race in second place. But if you look just at the body language of the jockeys behind, the only person who wasn't anxious at the top of the hill uh, was Johnny Murta on fame and glory. Mick is aware of Golden Sword taking it up and he chases on Moran who ran a good race but Johnny is the one man who hasn't gone for the steak or the butter and he's just hands and heels. He never really has to get this horse into really overdrive. He picks up Golden Sword and just keeps him over onto his job on that fresh bit of ground, gets over again the rail and quickens up well, has a peak up at the big screen. He doesn't have to give this horse a backhander, just kept him up to his job. He's a very good horse. He was entitled to be a big fancy in the Epsom Derby, which he ran a good race, and he's come back here. And I must say, no matter even if Sea of Stars had run, uh, he would have put it up to him today because this track suited him well, the gallop suited him well. He's a very, very good horse. Well, it's a wonderful performance. Johnny Murta, this is a some horse, isn't it? He did it so well. Listen, I was very sweet in this horse all week. You know, it wouldn't matter what horse turned up today, this horse would be very hard to beat. He's a lot of tactical speed, very quick into his stride and a great traveller. You know, he's just a very, very classy horse. Five length winner and a quick time and such an authoritative winner. As a four year old, Fame and Glory was back on the Group 1 trail in the 10 furlong Tattersall's Gold Cup. Here's a fair horse, this is uh, Fame and Glory, runaway winner of the Irish Derby last year, last June. And uh, 13 to 8 on he is, he won the Moors Bridge um, in great style by five lengths. Warm favourite. Uh, the last uh, furlong and a half now, and it's Fame and Glory out in front. Fame and Glory and Johnny Murta in the lead, over three lengths clear, Chinese white and recharge in a scrap for second place, but it's a one-way war as they race inside the final furlong, all over part the shouting. Fame and Glory easily justifies odds on favouritism in the Tadson's Gold Cup, wins it very easily, recharge second, third place for Chinese white. Halley Karnas is a bit of a flourish laid on for fourth. The winner has done it really well and went away and won well. And I'll recharge and Chinese White are two very good animals and he beat them both seven or eight lengths and done it well. Next he faced Sariska in the Coronation Cup. Running down to Tattenham Corner now in the Coronation Cup and on the inside Dixie Music has done his job well. Half a length to fame and glory, a length and a half away then is Sariska who's starting to loom up now. On the outside of Jukebox Jury, a length and a half then the Cavalry Man is coming into it and then Hume Zane from a long way back and they're clear of high heel. Into the home straight now and fame and glory's taken it up but here's Sariska, the filly on the outside. In behind them is Hume Zane running on well from Cavalry Man and then further back is high heel. They race up now with two furlongs left to go in the Coronation Cup. Fame and glory about a neck in front. Sariska trying hard to reel him in. Two or three lengths away. Hume Zane is knuckling down to it. And high heel. Fame and glory's found a bit extra. Inside the final furlong. Fame and glory repelling Sariska and then high heel. And this has been a game victory. Fame and glory. Runner up in the derby last year. Winner of the Coronation Cup this year. Goes on to beat Sariska. High heeled in third. Then Hume Zane followed by Cam Cavalry man, southeast to jukebox jury, Baskaroff, and last to finishes Dixie Music.
This is him, fame and glory, the most beautiful horse. He's by Monjeu, who obviously was a superstar horse owned by Michael Tabor and trained in France by John Hammond. But fame and glory, he deserves nothing less than this, a wonderful success. He's a real champion, and I like the way he knuckled down the last furlong. He's very solid, yeah. you know, there's no... No, he's just a beautiful Chinks. temperament, no chinks in his armour, and yeah. he did it the hard way today, and when Sariska came, she put up a good battle, but it was only going to be one winner. The following season, he was prepared for a tilt at the Ascot Gold Cup, where he was backed like defeat was out of the question. And here we have the favourite, 11 to 8 he is now, he's being supported, fame and glory, class, class, class. He is a four-time Group 1 winner, and he could yet be in the mould of Yates. I was nearly going to say the next Yates, there'll never be another Yates. The favourite, fame and glory. You were biggest price this morning. I know you're the father of Paddy Power. You went 13 to 5. Have you ever seen a gamble like this, Richard? It has been a huge gamble, and it even when it opened up at 9 to 4 on track here, and they've taken every price in. This was standout fame and glory in the paddock. He's such a handsome horse. So Duncan kicks on here by a length and a half to in second. Aim to prosper on the inside of Managar, a length away then as Ascatau running a big race, followed then on the inside by Holberg, Matrice around the outside, fame and glory coming there now in the centre, called on for an effort, he's making a fast forward move now as they round the home turn, and it's Duncan who heads up for home in front of Managar and Ascatau, but here's fame and glory, two furlongs left to go, and it's fame and glory who's racing up on the outside, grabs the lead now. Now, he now bursts away from them, goes a length and a half in front, Duncan is battling on, followed then by Managar, then down the outside of Pinion Pole, fame and glory in front, Opinion Pole trying hard, a half furlong left to go, fame and glory getting a bit weary, but he's got enough in hand, fame and glory the class horse of the field wins the Aston Gold Cup. If fame and glory's race record is something to savour, then so is his pedigree, a son of the brilliant Monjeu, his dam was group placed as a two-year-old for William Jarvis and is a daughter of Shirley Heights, while his second dam has the speed to win the German 1000 guineas. In a remarkable career, Fame and Glory recorded 14 wins from a mile upwards, with five of those successes coming at Group 1 level at two, three, four and five years. Looks, pedigree, soundness, class, national hunt prospects just don't come any better.